I now give the floor to the representative of the Lao People's Democratic Republic to introduce an address from the head of government. Madam President, I have a great honor to introduce the pre-recorded statement by His Excellency Tong Lun Si Sulit, Prime Minister of the Lao People's Democratic Republic. Mr. President, at the outset, on behalf of the delegation of the Lao PDR, I would like to congratulate you, Mr. Wolkan Boske, on your election as President of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I am confident that with your extensive and rich diplomatic experience, you will be able to lead the deliberations of these UNGA sessions under the themes, the future we want, the United Nations we need. Reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism, which is most relevant to the current situations of the international environment to a great success. Our delegation is ready to extend full support and cooperation to you in the discharge of your noble duties. Let me also comment your predecessor, His Excellency Tijani Muhammad Bande, for his successful presidency of the 74th sessions of the United Nations General Assembly amid the adverse impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the ongoing work of the United Nations. Mr. President, 75 years ago, the United Nations has been created from the ashes of World War II, aimed at saving succeeding generations from the scope of war that brought untold sufferings to our mankind one after another. Ever since its event, the United Nations has evolved into a main mechanism for preserving international peace and security, which constitutes a significant prerequisite for the promotion of international corporations and socio-economic development to be thrive. The United Nations Charter has become a significant tool that identifies mechanisms and principles for our joint and collective efforts to achieve our noble common objectives. To date, 75 years have passed, and we can say that under the United Nations auspices, the international community has made a number of significant achievements. Conflict resolution mechanisms through peaceful means has turned into principal and prevailing trends. International laws and treaties has been gradually enhanced and served as a tool to prevent and resolve various issues in areas such as disarmament, racial discrimination, religions and cultural differences, promotion and protections of human rights, and gender equality, to name a few. More importantly, Multilateral cooperation under the flag of the United Nations has synergized collective efforts in responding to and addressing major common challenges that no single country can do alone, such as an issue of climate change, pandemic, terrorism, and others. In addition, we have seen joint efforts in tackling challenges of the international communities under the framework of MDGs, SDG, action plan to help vulnerable countries, in particular, the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. Those collective efforts 
have helped a number of millions of people to get out of poverty and hunger and to have access to education, health service, and improve gender equality. Those are some significant achievements of the United Nations. But of course, the regional and international environment in the past 70 years is definitely different from the current setting. Therefore, the United Nations has to be adapted and strengthened if it is to effectively deliver its mandate on maintaining international peace and security as well as promoting development corporations. Again, this backdrop, the United Nations should be reformed to fit the current environment in our joint effort in addressing the unfold significant obstacle to, to peace and development, such as lasting resolutions to Middle East problems, in particular, the Palestinian issue and the call for lifting of economic embargo on Cuba, and so on. Cooperation for development should be further enhanced and prioritized. Without development, people will remain poor and hungry. As a result, peace cannot be sustained. And social problems such as crimes, drugs, human trafficking, and refugees will remain unresolved. This requires the international communities to actively address the pressing challenge together. Mr. President, as we all know, the world is currently facing serious outbreak of the new novel coronavirus of the COVID-19 pandemic which is an immediate and long-term challenge for us to respond and recover from its impact on economic development, both in the long term and the short term. Over the past decades, the world has never seen the pandemic on this scale before. More than 30 million people infected and nearly 1 million people have died. Besides, it has put huge impact on social economic development in many countries, leading the world economy to recessions, many companies went bankrupt, and unemployment skyrocketed. Achievements and efforts to eradicate poverty and progress in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals has been severely impacted. Therefore, the most immediate task for us is to jointly contain the COVID-19 pandemic as well as to implement strict preventive measures for the Lao PDA we have adopted very strict preventive measures and achieved quite a good result. With only 23 confirmed infected cases and no fatality. This achievement is partly due to the cooperation and assistance provided by our friendly countries and international organizations. On this note, I would like to take this opportunity to express our high appreciation to our friendly countries and international organizations for such valuable assistance accorded to us. I am confident that with a committed joint effort and with the progress being made on the research and development of vaccines, of which some are in the final stage, we will find a vaccine that is effective and safe to prevent COVID-19 soon. However, universal access to the vaccines is another important matter that need to be considered. Otherwise, we will not be able to respond to the pandemic effectively. 
In this regard, I would like to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt congratulations to the effort made by international organizations, in particular the World Health Organizations and all countries for the assistance extended to the other member states who are facing difficulties, which enable us to control the outbreak of the COVID-19 at a certain level including the initiative to establish a project to promote and ensure global access to vaccines without discriminations. If we can do so, we then will be able to meet the slogans of leave no, leaving no one behind. Another important task is a post-COVID-19 economic recovery How are we going to revitalize our economy and stimulate economic growth? I believe that the international community has to collectively address the issue that are off the coast to the international trade, fundings, and technology access, and build mutual trust for a win-win cooperation. Only this then, it will bring benefit and prosperity to the international communities. Therefore, the international community must enhance an, a policy of open trade and cooperation, integration and connectivity, as well as addressing the debt issue in order for the world economy to be able to thrive. Mr. President, today climate change has induced more frequent and severe natural disaster that brought huge impact on development to many parts of the world, which greatly affected to development, particularly food security and infrastructure development. Therefore, Building society with climate resilience and adaptations is very important. In these connections, it requires that international communities provide financial support and technological know-how to the least developed countries in order for them to be able to respond to the natural disaster. On the same note, it also calls for concert effort from all countries around the world to consume natural resources in a sustainable manner, employ more alternative energies, and follow the commitment under the Paris Agreement on reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to the rising of the world temperatures. What is more important is the fact that we have only 10 years left for the fulfillment of the international agreed agendas for the sustainable development by 2030s with the slogans leaving no one behind. In the past years, although many countries have actively implemented the Sustainable Development Goals, and many achievements have been made, in particular on poverty reductions of people around the world. But with the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, achieving SDGs will be a challenging task. I am of the view that in order to meet our lofty goals, the developed countries, including development partners, must honor the applications on ODA to vulnerable countries, such as least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for those countries to achieve the sustainable development goals on their own. 
For Lao PDR, we have integrated SDG and its targets into our eight five years national socio-economic development plans for 2016 to 2020 and will continue to further streamline SDGs into our next nine five-year plans. In addition, we have carried out outreach public awareness campaigns on the sustainable development goals at central and local levels so that all sectors of the societies are well aware of its importance and take part in its implementations. Lao PDR plan to present the second voluntary national reviews at the high level political forums on sustainable development in July 2021 to report and evaluate progress made on the implementation of SDG in our countries. In general, through the implementation of our national socio-economic development plan, as well as the implementation of SDGs, Lao PDR has made significant achievements. The country continent to enjoy political stability, social order, and continent economic growth, which has significantly contributed to the poverty reductions of our people and improving living standards of all multi ethnic people. We have been able to reduce poverty rates from 46% in 1992 to around 18% to date. Nonetheless, Due to the impact of natural disaster and COVID-19 pandemic, the economic growth is greatly impacted and is expected to go down in 2020, but may not be negative. In our upcoming nine five-year national socio-economic development plan for 2021 to 2025, Lao PDR will continue to develop our economy in line with sustainable and green growth strategy, integrated SDG into our national social economic development plan, as well as to build a strong foundations and necessary conditions for the country to graduate from the least developed country status in the future. Furthermore, in the regional cooperation context, the Lao PDR continue to support commitments and effort of ASEAN in the promotion of peace, stability, and security of the regions. We also embrace our efforts for regional and sub-regional economic integrations through ASEAN cooperation frameworks ASEAN dialogue partnerships and cooperation with other countries, including the ASEAN and United Nations cooperation framework aimed at achieving ASEAN visions 2025 and other priorities. We also support ASEAN in the collaboration with the World Health Organization and countries in response to COVID-19 pandemic and seeking solutions to economic recovery from the impact of the pandemic. Mr. President, in conclusion, I have a strong confidence that multilateral cooperation, conflict resolutions by peaceful means, and cooperation for development under the United Nations Charter remain a relevant mechanism in our effort to synergizing and unifying us for maintaining international peace and security, and our concert effort in addressing our common challenges lying ahead. Lessons learned from history remind us that unilateralism and the use of force to solve the problems 
always led to war and ushered the unwanted disaster to our mankind. In this respect, we have to try to avoid any emerging elements causing disunity so we can prevent disaster from ever occurring again to our humanity in the future. Laopedia has put great efforts in its national development, as well as efforts to eradicating poverty and lifting the countries out of the least developed country status. And we found that cooperation under the United Nations of species is very important in assisting developing countries in this regard. We stand ready to fulfill our obligations and actively contribute in such cooperation mechanism. In this spirit, Laopedia decided to present our candidatures for membership of the ECOSO of the United Nations for the term 2023 to 2025. It is my hope that as the Laopedia seeks a membership in this important United Nations body for the first time. We would highly appreciate the valuable support from all member states and the United Nations. And I promise that if elect, Laopedia will actively contribute to the work of the councils. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency the Prime Minister of Lao People's Democratic Republic. And I now give the floor to